Hey everyone, this is Adam Lee from Microsoft Gold Partner PEI. I have here with us Brandon Stewart, who is uh, Microsoft's and PEI's Azure expert. Brandon, why don't you say hi? Hello. So Brandon's going to be walking us through the power of Azure Backup Server. We have a couple other videos about Azure on our YouTube page and our website. Feel free to check them out. But uh, before we get into that, let's uh, just have Brandon take it away. Take it away, Brandon. Absolutely. Thanks, Adam. So Azure Backup Server, uh, very different than just Azure Backup. Azure Backup is four files and folders only. Azure Backup Server does just about everything else It uh, on almost every layer, so the, the physical layer, whether it be uh, any kind of box. I don't think there's any limitation on the physical box. Then the virtualization layer. It can be Hyper-V. It can be VMware. It can even be Azure. Um, it's even AppAware, meaning that it can back up and restore in granular restore technology methods, uh, SQL Server, Exchange, SharePoint, file servers, uh, quite a few things. So very cool. So we'll just jump right into the demo instead of uh, PowerPoint, you guys. Uh, this does require an Azure uh, Recovery Services Vault, as does Azure Backup Server, ASR, really any of them. They can all be housed in the same Recovery Vault is what we have here. Uh, this is for demo purposes. And we're going to cruise down to backed up items. We'll also show you the interface as well, but uh, this is a short demo, so we're going to keep it very high level. Uh, your Azure Backup Server, you'll see here that we do have a couple things being protected. We've got an exchange database, a couple files and folders or a volume, and a few virtual machines. So I'm going to take you over to the interface. For those of you familiar with DPM, this is essentially DPM rebranded. It really is, and it even says DPM in quite a few of the wizards or documentation, some of the, the buttons here. Um, but it is integrated with Azure Backup. In specific, uh, your, uh, your Azure Recovery Services Vault. So once deployed, you can set up your protection groups. Protection group is, uh, is a grouping of servers or services that uh, re remain protected. It's, it's really as simple as that. It's a little bit different than traditional backups where you would have your daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly job all split out. This is all in one. And uh, let me show you what I mean by that. So we'll go ahead and do a new new protection group here. Uh, this is servers or clients. You can back up clients, clients being laptops, desktops, servers being servers or applications. Inside here you can see we have our domain, our actual backup server, an exchange server, file and print server, and a SQL server. Uh, these are agents that get deployed from your actual Azure backup server. VMware integration, so you can actually see your data center, your clusters, and uh, exactly the way you have it organized in VMware. <laughs> um, so let's grab, let's grab a VM. Let's grab a small VM. Um, sure. And you label it anything you'd like. So we'll just call this VMs for the protection group. So it's labeled, as you see here, this protection group is just for exchange, just for files and folders. Um, you can just have one protection group if you prefer. Your protection method, short-term, two-disk, and online, meaning Azure Cloud Services blob storage. Retention range, for demo purposes, I'm going to do one day here. And we'll say, I don't know, let's just say Sunday at 5 p.m. It's going to estimate the data that it will require based on what we just told it. So in this example, uh, not a lot, it is a small VM. It is going to automatically grow volumes, which is nice. You won't have to go in there and allocate more space. Uh, if the entire volume is out, of course, you'll have to expand that volume. But this will allocate, and I'll show you the way it partitions out later on in this video. Uh, when do we want to? We can schedule it. I'm going to say automatically now or manually later if we wanted to. Consistency checks. It will do this if it becomes inconsistent, of course, but you can also schedule a consistency check uh, at any time. You can also do it on demand. So everything prior to this, let me go back so you can see the little disk, the symbol up here, a little hard drive. Uh, those were all for the on-prem, the d disk that's attached to your Azure backup server. 
This, however, begins the Azure uh, Recovery Services Vault options. So what's actually going to be stored up in Azure? And that's shown by the little blue cloud here. We only selected one VM. If we had multiple VMs or multiple applications, services, files, folders, volumes, whatever, it would be listed here and we could be selective on what we wanted to protect on-prem versus in the cloud. Your backup schedule every day, which is fine. 9 p.m. is fine. And back to the beginning of this video, what I was talking about as far as the way that uh, DPM or Azure Backup Server structures its protection groups and backup jobs is a little bit different than traditional. I actually prefer this method. The daily weekly, monthly, yearly jobs all in one instead of having different jobs for each one. Now, of course, you can still modify these just as you would anything else or any other backup solution. Uh, and your retention periods, they're all very customizable here. We're going to keep default and keep going. Automatically over the network. Now, if you had terabytes and terabytes worth of data and you did not want to push that over your WAN, you could load them on a hard drive, open a ticket with Azure uh, Data Center, and you would work with a sole individual that would accept the tracking, you would accept the package, they would load it into your tenant for you. Um, it's a very secure process. But for this single VM, we're going to say automatically over the network. Here are the details. You can optimize your performance, which is also very cool that we've not taken down your WAN link. Uh, you can throttle this for certain days, times, uh, or the amount even. We're going to create the group. All right, and the protection group has been created. We'll do close. It automatically, based on what we told it, kick off that first replica creation, which is in progress here. You can watch that. Any of the errors or just events are in here. Uh, we'll do a recovery real quick and show you how easy that is. Um, Left-hand side, same kind of topology, same structure. You can drill down into all of your uh, protected items. So there's our new virtual machine there. Um, it will query recover online recovery points. won't have anything because we're doing so now, but we do have a couple things here. So let's just back up. Uh, let's back up a folder or to recover a folder. So let's go to yesterday and recover. And it's recovering from online. Next, we can recover to the original location or an alternate path. We can create a copy, skip, or overwrite if there is a version there. Uh, and then, of course, security settings, notification if you want it to send once a job's finished. And backup test. We just click recover. And we can watch it. It's going to stage it. So you have to have a staging drive, which is important to note that you have enough size in your staging drive to complete the restore. So it brings it from your Azure Recovery Services Vault back to your Azure Backup Server here in, in your staging area. Uh, it's just a, a folder in my Dpartition that I've got. Uh, so it looks like we've got a couple files in this Azure Backup Test folder. Uh, and we can go take a look at that as well. Server name, PI, oh, there we go. Uh, Azure Backup Test. Yep, so we do. We have two files in this uh, in this folder, JPEG and a wave. So we'll watch as it mounts the information from your blob storage in Azure to your staging drive, which it's already done here. Uh, as it recovers all the data, it will then move it over to our destination, which we told it to, as copies. So we'll watch that happen here. And there we can see the two files were moved from the staging drive, or as they continue to move from the staging drive over to uh, our final destination here on our file and print server. And they are viewable. I don't have a WAV file, but we'll trust that it is there. The actual the dates even match up, but the size matches up as well. Uh, and that is a successful restore from online back on-prem on something we backed up back on the 18th.
using Azure Backup Server.